Today on Ballistic Burgers, I'm going to be cooking up the Nut Burger out of Matt's Place in Butte, Montana. Let's get going. So Matt's Place is a little diner, a little drive-in in Butte, Montana, and it was created by a gentleman named Matt Korn. Matt visited Southern California, I, I'm guessing in the late 20s, fell in love with the burger culture, with the drive-ins, and he wanted to bring this back to Montana. So Matt actually opened the first drive-in in in the entire state of Montana, which is pretty cool. Matt created the nut burger, which I'm gonna make for you today. Now, as I was doing my research for this burger, I'm trying to do an accurate recreation. I'm not just doing my interpretation of this burger. I discovered that the diner was actually on the market. It's for sale and it's permanently closed. I was trying to find out why, I, for whatever reason, I mean, this burger place has been open again since 1930 and I could not find any write-ups as to why it was closed. It wasn't until I really started digging deep that I discovered that the most recent owner, whose family owned this place since like 1945, by the way, he passed away at the age of 74. And I'm really hoping that someone will buy the business and carry on because the menu has not changed. The only thing that's changed is the prices. They were selling these burgers originally for like 15 cents a piece. Um, but they were they held on to the original menu all these years. So it's a burger that, in my opinion, is on the endangered species list. I'm going to start cooking this. It's a, going to be a very quick cook here in a moment. But I was asked by a friend of mine who I was talking with over the phone over the research I was doing on this burger. And he suggested that I kind of let, tell you guys the steps that I go through in order to do one of these recreations. So please bear with me. I'll put chapters in here. If you want to skip over to the cook, then uh, it won't be any skin off my back. But when I discover a burger that I want to recreate, that I want to copycat, it's either going to come through suggestions from you or I'm going to find it on my own. By the way, if you do leave a suggestion um, a request, email it please because five years from now, the, sh the chances of me finding a comment down here with a suggestion is very rare. All the suggestions I receive go into a folder, so I'll go through the folder and I'll be inspired to cre recreate one of these burgers. Uh, first thing I do is go online and I just start looking for articles. I'm looking for articles written by, usually it's going to be a local magazine or something doing an ex expose on, on a burger joint and on a burger. And a lot of times they'll get into specifics, which is very helpful. The next thing I do is I'm going to look for uh, video footage of the actual cooks in that restaurant cooking the burger. And some of the best come from, again, local um, news agencies doing a special on that restaurant. Um, Diners, Drive-Ins and Dives is another good source that I'll go to. Uh, I try to avoid looking at videos from fellow YouTubers. Uh, I found that even quite often, the largest burger channels, uh, there's inaccuracies. They're, they're good recipes, but they're more of a, like I said, more a lot of poetic license is taken. Um, a good example was on this burger. I found two good videos of the Montana Nut Burger uh, one, the patty was smashed paper thin, and the other one, it wasn't, it was smashed, but not paper thin, but the buns weren't toasted. So these are things that I obsess over. I'm tr again, I'm not only trying to get the recipe accurate, but I'm trying to reproduce the technique and everything. I, I want it to be as accurate as possible, especially on a burger like this now that's at risk of being forgotten. Um, so on this particular burger, I found a really good video. Uh, it was produced by the James Beard Foundation because this burger, this restaurant actually received a James Beard Award. Um, and again, no one's talking about it closing. It's, it's crazy to me. But uh, the former owner who passed, Brad, is in it and he was saying some things that were just so helpful, so helpful. So without any further ado, let's cook this burger. We're going to kick this off with the nut sauce. 
the foundation of a nut burger. I have here some crushed salted peanuts, basically what you would get on a, on a Sunday. Then I have here some mayo, not just any mayo, this mayo. I bought a small bottle because it's not my favorite mayo, but it's what they used. And um, it's definitely, for me as a mayo, it's, it's a little too sweet, but I'm thinking, you know, with the saltiness of the peanuts, it's probably a good choice. We'll add the finger quotes mayo. And I am not measuring any of this. Basically, we're just eyeballing everything. And if it looks like there's not enough nuts, I'll add more nuts. Go ahead and give it a stir. We're almost there, but not quite. Just a little too much of that mayo. So I'm going to up the nut ratio. And this is exactly what we're looking for. A lot thicker than I had it originally. Let's cook this burger. So I'm using my flat top griddle here. These two burners are on medium high. These two are off. And this zone right here is where I'm going to toast the buns. So Matt's Place did toast their buns and they used just very plain hamburger buns, no sesame seeds or anything. I'm just gonna get these on here. Let the toasting begin. Now for the burger I have here, this I'm going with five ounces of ground 80-20 beef. So before I smash this, I like to let it just heat up a little bit. And Matt's did not smash their burgers paper thin. They, you know, look probably about a quarter of an inch thick or so. Go ahead and get this smashed. There we go. In the meantime, the buns are perfect. I have those off on the side with the burner turned off now to keep them warm. A little bit of kosher salt. Now what I'm waiting for here is just these holes that are forming. I want to see a little bit more of that and some, you know, juice kind of bubbling through before I flip. So this is what I'm looking for. You see all this juice bubbling through, time to flip. And you can see how it's nice and adhered. You want it to be difficult to scrape off. This means we have a good crust. Like that. All right, let's do this. All right, we'll get that burger patty down. The nut sauce. They're pretty generous with this nut sauce over there at Matt's. And there we are, the nut burger. And check that out. Let's give this a try. Mm. First time I've had one of these, by the way. It's good. The, that heat from the burger, that fresh burger come right off the grill, being topped with this, you know, the sauce. The sauce is now very warm and melty. Not a lot of burgers out there with this textural experience. It's good. Those nuts are just really nice and crunchy. Add a little bit of salt. That mayo, you know, has that kind of a tang to it. Buns. Once that hot, you know, uh, patty go down and then the buns on top, the steam makes them even softer. Good stuff. Now at Matt's, they also served, or an option was to have onion, tomato, lettuce, and mustard on the top bun. I didn't want it that way. I wanted the true nut burger experience, and I think this is it. Wow, I'm happy. It was good. Actually, it reminds me of a sandwich my mom used to make me when I was a kid. I'll explain it in another video, because I think I'm gonna do a spin on it and make a burger. Anyway, I, I really hope someone buys Matt's place keeps it Matt's, Matt's place, keeps the menu, and keeps this burger alive, because it's part of our culture, and, it, and I think it needs to be preserved. Wow. Anyway, if you're not subscribed, make sure you hit that red button. Make sure you ring the notification bell. Thumb it up if you liked it. Send me your request if you have any, and the more details, the better, especially pictures. See you on the next video. Cheers.